the privilege to introduce to you today Shannon Sedwick Davis. She is the author of To Stop a Warlord. Wow, what, what, what a book this is, a very powerful book. And I have to mention she's one of Kirsten Bell's favorite authors. So here is Shannon and welcome to Global Positive News Network, Shannon. Thank you so much for having me. Yes, yes, absolutely. Shannon, is this one of your first books that you've written? Yes, it's definitely awesome. my first book, uh, and it was certainly a labor of love. It took us about five years to write this book. Wow, it, it, it's, it's like giving birth. I, I've written a book before, too. It's like giving birth. It just, just takes time. <laughs> it was much harder than giving birth, actually. <laughs> really <good>. Okay. <laughs> wow. So what prompted you to write this book? Yeah, you know, we, um, as a philanthropist, we had gotten involved in a really unconventional, uh, you can tell I've just not even been talking, I guess, the last 28 days, hardly. Um, no, I, you're she. I know what you mean. I know. It's just like, you know, just. No, it is. I'm trying to get in a rhythm. I was doing this like every other week, and now it's been four weeks, and I'm like, okay, here we go. I got you can get back up on the bike. It's okay. Oh, girl, exactly. <laughs> My goodness. <laughs> so, yeah, so we got involved as philanthropists in a really unconventional intervention to uh -huh. try and stop um, Africa's longest running war at the oh, time. Oh, man. And it was over a decade journey uh -huh. um, where we learned so much about mm -hmm. humanity. We learned so much about the people that we thought we were there to mm -hmm. serve. Um, and it just, it wasn't going to be fair not to honor that story. It was too sacred. It was too sacred not to write the book. It was almost too sacred to write it and too sacred for the paper. And so we really wrestled. Um, but at the end of the day, I just, I really wanted to share it with others because it, it truly was such an, a meaningful uh, journey to have been a part of. Fantastic. Well, were you actually in Africa and you saw this type of thing taking place? Yes, that's right. So wow. we, the money management mutual funds company, we give away half of our profits and um, our mission statement is to end genocide and mass atrocity in the globe. Mm -hmm. And so we've been granting across a number of countries and this particular um, this particular conflict really was driven home to us. Our, our mission statement says a world without genocide, a world without mass atrocity. Yes. And what I found that we were doing is we were putting band-aids on bullet holes. We were coming in after the atrocities and trying to help, which was incredibly important, yes. or we were funding advocacy before the fact. And I thought, gosh, you know, we really had to look in the mirror and say, are we doing what our mission statement says? Because if we're not, we need to either change our mission statement mm -hmm. or we need to actually try and stop an atrocity. Mm -hmm. And so this was our journey in doing so in one particular region in the world. Wow. Bless your heart. This is incredible. I love it. Wow. That's so neat. So overall, what do you wish to accomplish? Yeah, so my hope is that the book will just serve as an inspiration for others. Okay. Mm -hmm. It's really difficult to read in the beginning because it, it was awful um, what people suffered oh. under a particular regime. But there's so much, if you can get through it, there's so much hope at the end. And uh, I think it's a lesson in, uh, we have so much to learn from, from those that we were exposed to and, and got uh, to meet along this journey. We have so much to learn about justice. Mm -hmm. and, um, their, their particular type of justice is this beautiful, restorative type of justice. Wow. As a trained attorney here in the United States, we only learn about retributive justice. Right. And mm -hmm. It's really transformative in my life to just consider these valuable lessons about mm -hmm. restorative justice and how that can ultimately bring peace in such meaningful ways. Mm -hmm. uh, there's so many lessons on forgiveness. And for me, it was a, it was truly a 10-year-long lesson in learning how to practice joy mm -hmm. it's a pretty tremendous suffering mm -hmm. that's incredible what are some of the key points for practicing joy i think that our audience needs to hear that at this day and time in our unprecedented human history yes no i you know for me i was really fortunate uh, we were a part and i was a part of the advisory board for a group called the elders that mm -hmm. archbishop desmond tutu chaired wonderful and so i traveled with him and several of the elders to uh, the darfuri region of sudan um wow. several years ago and we were in these refugee camps and the situation was awful i write about this in the book i mean it was just 
it was atrocious conditions. We were, uh, we were with people who um, didn't know where their next meal was going to come from and um, were just in the most dire of conditions. Wow. And I look over at Archbishop and he, uh, he starts to sing. Oh, wow. Nice. He starts dancing. Mm. And it's, it's so hot and I'm standing under this one little limb that I found, you know, of a tree and I'm just, I'm fanning myself and I feel so bolted to the ground in despair in this moment. Mm -hmm. And meanwhile, Arch is dancing and singing and then I watch all the other people around us start dancing and singing. And later we were in the car headed back and, um, and I asked him about it. I said, Arch, you know, where what happened there? You know, I, weren't you so sad? I was so sad. And he said, he said, sister, he said, I was so sad. He said, I was crying on the inside. Um, but we must learn to practice joy. And that's when I realized that um, even in our suffering and in our sorrows and when we're grieving situations, mm -hmm. um, that joy is different than happiness. Mm -hmm. And that it is something that can be practiced. And mm -hmm. so I've, mm -hmm. I've started to do it in a number of ways. We're expecting actually thunderstorms again later oh. today here in Texas. And I tend to go out and dance when it rains. And I love it. And my kids outside with me. <laughs> and that's just one of the ways that I've started to try and practice joy. Um, and it's usually when I feel like doing it the least that I actually need it the most. Isn't that incredible? Oh, I love that. That's a great lesson. That, that's an inspiration. Thank you, Shannon. That's fabulous. Wow. So Shannon, what in, what, what's like one of the biggest impacts you've made in your community in the last six months? Yeah, so I think it, what's been really challenging for us um, <laughs> is, you know, being very separate from the region that we work. So mm -hmm. at present, we're obviously not able to travel. Um, yeah. And most of our work is in Central and East Africa. So we're so grateful for technology. We've been yep. able to- oh, it's amazing. Uh, we're just so, so <laughs> blessed by that, to be honest. And I mean, I had a team call the other night and, um, you know, I had our team member from Uganda was on, you know, oh. a video chat with me on Zoom. So just like yeah. you and I are, and <laughs> it was incredible to be able to check in with him. And, um, and we're just really relying um, on them right now uh, mm -hmm. for our work field and doing everything that we can to support mm -hmm. them at a distance. Mm -hmm. And so you really are supporting them at a distance. And I'm sure, you know, you're funding them for various programs there mm -hmm. in Africa. And, That's right. and um, investigating some of the early testing. So they're a little bit, um, they're, you know, we're a little bit ahead in terms of the outbreak hitting us. Um, it, you know, it has absolutely started on the continent there, mm -hmm. but um, we're going to need to try to apply everything and anything that we're learning. That's yeah, amazing. Try to mobilize and get, get as much as we can there and as quick as we can. Incredible. But yeah, a genocide, what, what, a, what a taboo, what a horrible topic. But you, you, you are attacking this topic. It is, it's hard for me to talk about because it's, it's a difficult thing. And it's so political. I mean, isn't it all driven by money, power, political ideologies? And I mean, how do you stop that type of thing? Yeah, no, it, it absolutely is. I mean, a different, obviously different genocides, different mass atrocities are, are driven by, by different things. Um, but ultimately what you always see is the poorest of the poor is disproportionately affected, yep. right? I mean, no matter what. Right. And, um, oh, it's such a great tragedy and it's so vile. Um, yeah. And so it's, it's all about just sort of Turning, turning that on its head and looking for opportunities, you also will find that those people who are being most effective have the solutions already, right? Like there's no way that we can presume, right? As, as Americans to, right. to go over there and suggest a solution um, to yeah. that they've been facing for decades in their communities. So for us, it was all about learning how to listen and mm -hmm. listen well. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. um, because they already had ideas and they already were doing things. And then it was, how can we support those at a level to where they can scale those ideas? Uh, there's this incredible Catholic priest that we partnered with at the beginning of this work, mm -hmm. a man named Father Abe Benoit. And he had started a tiny little radio network so that different villages could warn each other as attacks oh, were coming. Wow. There was no cell phone or anything, so they were able to warn each other of attacks. And so, for instance, we were able to partner with him, wow. and that radio network grew to over 100 radio stations oh, that could check in. That and awesome. 
And then you yeah. could see the, the, where the attacks were happening and mm -hmm. you could start to predict them. And then that information was really valuable and important. But because of heroes like Father Abe Benoit, you know, we were able to really go in and, and just help plus efforts. Mm -hmm. Fantastic. Oh my gosh. Lessons to you for doing all that. That's incredible. Oh my gosh. Wow. So Shannon, what do you have coming in the near future? Any more books up your sleeve? Oh my goodness, I hope not. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's hilarious. All of my author friends are like, Shannon, you really took this book process hard. And I was like, <laughs> it was, it was so hard. I mean, I, just, I set out to do a lot of things in my life, but never was writing a book. Oh, yes. So yeah. it was yeah. a real labor. Um, no, I, my great hope is as things um, settle down and we're able to go back to a lot of our, our daily work that I'll just continue to do a lot of the speaking that I've been doing. I'm oh, really excited about the next generation. Of uh -huh. I mean, the youth in our country are mm -hmm. tremendous. Yes. I yes. mean, sitting, I've been able to sit with some of these high school students yes. and listen to their ideas and their lives out. And I mean, I just love how deeply connected they feel to justice issues and to um, and incredible issues on our globe. And so my hope is that I, I can continue to have those conversations and uh, that they might be able to learn from some of our failures and from some of the things that we got right. And I can be a source of encouragement for them. And inspiration. Fantastic. I love that. That's so good. <laughs> So Shanna, what positive news do you want to share with our viewers today at Global Positive News Network? Oh, yeah. So there is so much positive, right? And so yes. I think what we should really, and now more than any time, is where we've really got to focus on that and we've got to think about that. And um, for me, I, I see it every day in, in the healthcare workers and mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that are showing up and, and caring for uh, the elderly and more vulnerable populations. Yes. I, I'm seeing it, um, to be honest, in my 14-year-old son, who this week when I was working, and my 11-year-old son was trying to get used to distance learning. Yes. Um, and yeah. making it very difficult for mom to, uh, <laughs> to be on the phone longer than about 12 minutes. Um, I watched my 14-year-old just swoop in and start reading his brother and helping his brother with his math problems and just watching how as a family uh, mm -hmm. we've been able to um, you know, sort of very very organically uh, mm -hmm. share our gifts with each other Aww. and fully present with each yeah. other you know yeah. presence, physical presence is one thing but true true presence is different mm -hmm. and um, mm -hmm. that for me has been the good news that's fantastic. Oh, that's so inspiring. I mean, it's kind of like an evolution of your family, your For sure. family, you For know, sure. and, I, and I kind of think this radiates out to everybody who's affected by this, which is everybody in the world. And that I find that there's more kindness, you know, when, when you're out walking and yeah. you're staying six feet away, of course, yeah. but I feel like pe there, there's more conversations that are on the street and things like that. I mean, people are just more kind during this time because they understand this is a, a, a tragic time, but it's also a time for opportunity. And don't you think this is gonna help us be so much better when we're out of this as well? Oh like my gosh. I gosh, like be better at so my most, way by yes. learning lessons in presence and by yes. remembering what it felt like to be fully present. Because I think that really yes. is a gift that we're gonna be able to give into our our lines of work as we go back to normal or somewhat normal. And yeah. as the, go back to school. So I, I do feel like this is a great time of learning for all of us. I love it. Perfect. Perfect. And then one last quick question. So how did you connect with Kirsten Bell? How did, how did she know your book and how do you know she is, you know, she loves your work? <laughs> so, I mean, I think Kristen is attracted to issues of injustice and is also a huge champion for good in this world and so i met her early on in our work well before the book came out uh, she traveled to the region 
to wow. take a look at the situation there and got deeply invested and engaged in that work there. Wow. And then as we were going through this decade long journey of this work, of course, that I never thought I'd write a book about, um, <laughs> she remained a close friend. So I would be oh. in the field and we would have a hard day and I would send her a text and I would just get the most encouraging messages back from her. Or we'd have a great day and um, I would call her, you know, mm -hmm. and she in the background that we were celebrating. Um, she just has been a true, uh, a true inspiration and anchor for me and a soul sister in every sense of the word. I'm so grateful for her. Wow, that's wonderful. I love that. So cool. Wow. Well, I want to urge our viewers at Google Positive News Network to check out your book. Um, it's now available as of April 7th. So your book just came out. The, the paperback version, yes, yes, it did. Super congratulations, that's so exciting, oh my gosh. And uh, you can get, it, our audience can get it off Amazon, is that correct? That's correct, That's yeah. about the only way we can get it these days. I guess you can't get it at a local bookstore, darn it. Get a jar of peanut butter and get a book. Oh. Here you go, that's it, that's it, wow. Well, Shannon, thank you, it's been a pleasure to uh, talk to you here, have you um, on our interview at Global Positive News Network. And I look forward to uh, speaking to you again sometime in the future. Oh, thank you so much. I'm so grateful. <laughs>